All right, today we're going to talk about how I learned to sleep better as an insomniac. An insomniac is basically someone who finds it difficult to sleep and has difficulties around sleep, right? So I'll take you through that with nine different steps. But first, let me tell you a story. This is Jimmy. Jimmy's an average man, just like you and I, right? Jimmy struggles when he goes to bed, right? He struggles when he's waking up, when the alarm goes off in the morning, he's like, oh, he feels like a train's hit him, right? It's horrible. He can't seem to get it straight in his head, right? And because of this, he's tired throughout the day, falling asleep in class, his grades are suffering. His lifestyle is generally pretty badly affected by the way that he sleeps. And he's gotten used to it over time. He's not, he doesn't even notice it anymore, right? He feels like this is life as it is normally, right? Surely there isn't, it doesn't get better than this because that's how life is, right? He's accepted it. And here's why that's important, right? It affects everything in Jimmy's life, right? We already talked about grades, but there's the mental performance, the physical performance, all these mal illnesses, right? Heart disease, cancer, Alzheimer's, diabetes, and general all-cause mentality is affected by the way you sleep. These diseases increase in people who have a lower quality of sleep. Right? So it's a very, very important thing that we need to focus on in our lives, you and I and Jimmy included. Right? And here's an interesting fact. Right? In the spring, when we lose an hour of sleep because of daylight savings time, right? when we lose an hour of sleep, the rate of heart disease increases by 24%. Right? Just think about that, 24%, a quarter of an increase. Right? And the winter, when we gain an hour of sleep, the rate of heart disease decreases by 21%, by almost exactly the same amount. Right? And it's very, very correlatory. Like it happens at almost exactly the same time. Right? It's stunning the effect that sleep has on our health, our physical health not just mental, right? We might feel tired, but the effects in our physical body are evident from these studies, right? And so we come back to Jimmy, right? Jimmy has bad days and he has worse days, right? He really feels the effects on his worst days of just, you know, having these kind of like, he's hearing things, he's seeing things. He can't, he can barely hold a conversation. He can barely hold a train of thought and it really affects his daily life. And the bad days, he just thinks that these are normal now because he's got so used to it that the bad days are now normal, right? And if that's a new normal, then compared to anyone else, his life in general is full of these bad days, right? Meanwhile, here's Jimmy's classmate. He's got his sleep in order. For some, for, I don't know how, Jimmy doesn't know how, but he's got his stuff sorted out. He seems to be never tired, and therefore he's better at studies or his work. He's better at sport, and just generally seems to be better than Jimmy, right? And this is the problem. This is because of the point of the power of tiny gains, right? This is from James Clear's book Atomic Habits, right? When someone is like one percent better every day, it compounds so that the person is thirty-seven point seven eight times better over the course of a year, right? Whereas if you're 1% worse every day, then you just regress to about zero, 0.03% 0 .03 of the year, right? Over the course of a year, right? And so it's no wonder that even these tiny, tiny gains or tiny, tiny effects can affect you so much over the long term. And so it seems like this classmate of Jimmy's it just seems like a better person than Jimmy is, right? All this to say that this stuff is important, right? Do you relate to this? I know I do, right? In my past, I've been like this for a long time. I wanted to find the answers and I finally did, right? So yeah, I did relate, but then I learned the secrets and that's what I want to pass on to you today, right? I learned many things over the course of my childhood to where I am now in my adulthood, I learned various different things. There wasn't any like one point where like the wisdom of the gods just passed down onto me and I learned everything there was to know about sleep. I learned little things over time, like little things here, there, 
And today I want to accumulate all the knowledge I've gathered over the years and put it into one lecture to save you that time and that suffering. Because back then, I was no stranger to insomnia, right? I found it very hard to sleep. And waking up was a struggle for me as well. I was sleeping in class and it wasn't good, right? My teachers weren't happy in lectures at university, in high school, in classes like that. I would get into a lot of trouble for sleeping in class, right? And now, I sleep very easily, right? I wake up with no alarms, and that's the most surprising part, right? People are very shocked that I have no alarms and I somehow wake up early. Like, how does that work? I'll answer that very soon in that part of the lecture, right? And I have a consistent energy all day. No dips, no tiredness. I feel I can keep going throughout the day, regardless of what I'm doing, right? So how do I do that? My name is Dylan Alexander, and today I'm going to teach you what I learned over that long period of time, over those 10 plus years, from my childhood to where I am now. I'm going to do that without giving you the scars, right? Of 10 years of mistakes and trying to learn this stuff, of the bad performance in my life, leading to lifestyle damage, right? Of being so tired and being so unable to like control emotions and impulses and things like this, that led to my life being worse because of it. So I'll save you all that trouble, save you all those scars, and give you all that knowledge in just a few moments here in this video. An hour long, right? And we'll do that through our philosophy. Our philosophy is not to be a sheep, not to be an NPC. It is to be a thinker, right? Because the truth is, we're not aspiring to be average here, right? If you're watching a video like this, you don't want to be average, right? Because the average person, I've got in the corner here some stats, is divorced, obese, has less than 1k in the bank, and we don't, we don't want to aspire to be like the average person. We need to be extraordinary. We want to be extraordinary. We want to be unique. And we don't want to be like everyone else. And so we, we understand that we are different. We understand that the things we do will have to be different to what everyone else does. So we're not afraid to stand out. We're not afraid to do things that are outside the box. And we're not afraid to think about what we do in life. Because the sad reality is most people don't think. They do what they feel, they do what everyone else is doing, they do what people they do what they see on TV, they don't think for themselves whether what they are doing is good for them or not. Right? And that's something that we want to aspire to be, and that's the philosophy I will bring to this video today. Because we'll do things that do seem a bit extra, that do seem a bit outside the box, that do seem a bit beyond what the average person does, and that's exactly the point. Okay? So firstly, I'm going to go through nine tips to give you guys and then a Q&A section at the end as well. And if you want to submit questions for that Q&A section, there's a link in the first link in the description or the pinned comment below. Click on that and you'll be able to submit questions through that page. So the nine tips, some interesting titles here as well, right? The first, the holy trinity of sleep. The second, bedtime activities. Three, physical signals. Four, all-nighters. And this section is going to be about going to sleep. And the next one's going to be about waking up in the morning, right? So four about going to bed and five about the morning waking up. Number five, the no alarm wake up. Number six, the morning routine. Number seven, diet. Number eight, exercise. Number nine, too much sleep. Okay, let's get started. The holy trinity of sleep. So this is cold, dark and quiet. Okay. These are the three things that if you take nothing else from this video, you'll remember as conditions you need to get the best sleep you can get. So let's start with cold. You will know, you'll have memories in your life if you've slept in hot countries before, or if you live in a hot country where it, where it gets quite hot. If it gets too hot, it leads to very bad sleep. You tend to sweat all night and you can't get to sleep, and it's just the most horrible experience, and it's easily fixable through these conditions, right? getting a fan, having some AC unit or cracking a window open, whatever you need to do, right? I often, when I was younger in the summer, I used to get a towel, um, soak it in cold water, squeeze out the excess, and then just drape it onto my body when I was asleep, right? So a cold, wet towel on my body, and that used to help me sleep a lot better. Or maybe just on your forehead or on your face or just anywhere on you. It helps you sleep better. If you don't have a fan, if you don't have an AC, if you don't have a... If the window, if the air outside is even warmer than your room, 
then there's no point opening the window, then have that cold towel method, right? It's a bit of an esoteric, or maybe a, a bit of a strange one, but it worked for me when I was younger. And so sometimes that's something I recommend to people as well. Wear less or no clothes, right? I know that's weird to suggest that, but yeah, <laughs> like it, it, it helps, right? The reason that things like sticking a leg out, the reason that helps is because you have a bare leg and that part of your body is exposed to the cold temperature of the room. And so it regulates the temperature, so it balances to be a perfect temperature for your body to sleep at, right? And the perfect temperature, it turns out, the perfect room temperature is about 18 degrees Celsius, okay? Scientists have researched this and found that that's the perfect temperature for your room to be in, right? And it's because under your sheets, you have this kind of warm zone, right, where you are. Right, I'm just going to draw a person. <laughs> you have a warm zone, and outside it's cold, right? It's warm in here, and it's cold out there, right? And so if it gets too warm, you can stick a leg outside to regulate your body temperature and, you know, with your feet, your hands, your arms, it regulates it because it's a balance between the warm and the cold that creates the best conditions for you to sleep in, right? If that makes sense. What about winter? So in winter, decrease the heating about an hour before you sleep and you should be fine. Aim for something about 18 degrees Celsius. I know it's going to be different for different people. I don't know. I don't have like a temperature setting in my house, but I tend to sleep well with a window open at night. And that tends to be good enough for me. I live in the UK. It doesn't really get that hot in the UK, right? But generally, make it a bit colder when you sleep at night time. Okay. Dark. Okay. Dark, I recommend getting some pretty dark curtains if you can. If you can get some blackout curtains, that's even better. I used to sleep in another house that I used to live in with a, a street lamp right outside my window. And would result in the worst sleep I had in my life. Like, it would shine straight into my window at night time and it was just the, the worst thing in the world i was like oh really come on now i had i had curtains but it wouldn't do the job because it wasn't you know on a window the curtains would just kind of like drape around and not really have like a tight seal on the window and so it just it wouldn't really work right for that i'd recommend something more expensive like blackout curtains they tend to be a little bit on the expensive side but it's worth it if you have that kind of situation in your life i don't have blackout curtains i have relatively cheap black, just black the color curtains. And that tends to do the job because I live in an area right now where there's no street lamp outside my window. It's just, nat it's pretty much nature out there, right? It's just like a view of some like trees and fields, that's it, right? So I don't need it in my life. But if I were to live in a city, for example, I would probably get some blackout curtains or some blinds, right? I've seen in some countries where, so if you go really far up north, there are some countries where in the summer, the sun doesn't even set. Right? I know that's like a, a really wild idea, but that's actually the truth, right? Because it's they live so, so far up north that the, the tilt of the Earth's axis means that the sun doesn't set for a period of time, for a period of weeks during the summer, right? And so they have blinds that are completely, not airtight, but like light tight, if that makes sense, right? And they like actually fully block out the light and they kind of electronically like zoom down onto the window and it's completely pitch black if you get one of these blinds fixed to your window it's really really cool right it really genuinely creates that pitch black effect and it's really good right? so if you want to like really optimize your sleep then get one of those right if you live in a country that's way up north like um what like norway sweden that kind of area then you probably have one of these already but if you really want to optimize it, get one of these. Okay, next one. Computers, electronics. So obviously you know to turn off your TVs and computers when you go to bed. But there might be some like flashing light. Like maybe your laptop is charging or maybe there's a uh, some kind of light signaling from your speaker or your microphone or your, whatever, your camera or whatever. Make sure to turn those off. Unplug them or if you can't unplug them put like a sticker of tape over them so that they don't flash in your face at night time because it needs to be that dark when you sleep, right? If you have some kind of light shining in your eyes, you will notice it. Like your eyelids, you might not know, but they are like a, a thin membrane of skin that allows light through on purpose because in the caveman times when the sun rose, that's when we would wake up. And because we could see a bright sky through our eyelids, 
that's what allowed us to wake up at that time. So even though your eyes are closed, you can still see small lights like this and they will affect your sleep. Okay, so don't think just because your eyes are closed, you can sleep anywhere with any lights. Try to turn off the most lights that you can, all the lights that you can in your room, right? Have it as pitch black as you can make it. Light through the door. So in a bedroom, you might have light coming through the door. You might be living with people, things like that. Just make sure to communicate the fact that you need the light turned off at night time so that light doesn't sneak into your room through the door, right? If you can, put something that is like a... People will sometimes have a draft excluder, so like a little bit, bit of like uh, filled in like material here to block out the draft, so wind, but it also works for light as well. So if you have those, put that there and it will work for your door at night time as well. So that is light through the door. So quiet, the last of the three. Probably the most difficult one to kind of get a handle on, but here's what you can do, right? And here are the factors. Family, housemates, neighbours, again, some communication with this helps a lot. You will have to say this multiple times. You can't just say it one time. My recommendation is to be polite. And yes, one time is not enough. You will have to say it 10 times and try to be polite each time, right? Because they just might forget. They might not realise how much of a priority it is for you. Just remind them every time, right? Maybe your, your housemates might go out drinking and when they come back, just be like, look, could you please not do that every night when you come in? It's a bit noisy and I can't sleep. And it's, I would appreciate if you guys could, you know, keep it down a little bit, right? Or maybe before they go on the night out, right? Just tell them, okay, when you come back, please make sure to be a bit quieter because I need to, to sleep at night and I that's one of my priorities. So please make sure that you bear that in mind, right? And so just try doing that each time and you should be able to, get that quiet that you need for your sleep, okay? So, earplugs. Earplugs, I have tried for a period of my life and they work, they do work, but I just couldn't keep doing them because it seems so weird to me to just stick a foreign object into my face every night and pull it out in the morning. It just, it was really, I didn't like it, right? I didn't like it. They do work, so if you wanna do them, try them out if you want to. I don't like them. Just a personal kind of preference for me. White noise. This is like basically the TV static noise. That's like a... And what the purpose of that is, is to drown out other noises in the night that might be kind of a bit more... Uh, how do you say this? A bit more surprising to you. Like a dog barking or a glass shattering or someone screaming. White noise blocks all that noise out. And so you can just relax in the sound of... TV static. If you don't like TV static, you can listen to the sound of either rain or ocean waves or like trees in the wind. Any kind of natural noise is typically good for you to kind of like relax a little bit and understand that there's nothing else going on apart from these natural noises, right? Lastly, an audiobook or a podcast similarly will drown out other noises and have like some kind of natural conversation-y kind of noise that is, it's good for you to sleep with, right? It typically blocks out most noises you hear in the nighttime, and that is good for this. Quiet. Good. Fantastic. So, the second thing, bedtime activities. The first of these, reduce blue light. This is probably one of the most chunky sections, so I'm going to get through this pretty quick and give you some small details that will help you in big ways in this area, right? So any screen you look at, put a red color filter on there, okay? So on Windows, that's usually the night light and a Mac that is called night shift as well. I have a Windows computer, so I don't know about Mac, but I Googled this and this is how it should be, right? So Mac strength is recommended if you can do that. So on Windows, it looks like this. If you go to the corner of your screen, there's these three icons, the Wi-Fi, the sound, the battery, and you click on this bit here, which says night light, and it turns on your night light. If you want to go into the settings it's system display night light and you can increase the strength to be at the max okay and on the mac it's like this choose apple menu system settings or system preferences check displays and click night shift okay that is the one okay fantastic on your phones okay apple or android 
On Apple, there's something called Night Shift. And Android, I don't remember what it's called. I'm sure, I'm certain, there's something equivalent to Night Shift on Android. I'm not sure what it's called, but I know that exists, right? And on both, there's something called a color filter. So let me take you through those things right now. So Night Shift on an iPhone, an Apple iPhone, right? Night Shift, type in Night Shift into settings, click Night Shift, you'll be taken to here. Click more warm and enable that like this. Color filter, go to settings, type in color filter, go to color tint and put the intensity to the max and the hue all the way to the right to get to the red setting, okay? Android, very similar settings, typically the same thing, right? Go to settings, type in the, the right word, find the setting and do what you need to do. Having it automatically switch is a bit more complicated, right? So let me teach you how to do that. On Windows, you go to those same settings, system, display, night light, and you go to the section below here. You can set it to do automatically at sunset and sunrise. So it automatically does that for you whenever sunset and sunrise happens in your country, or you can set hours, right? So typically, or on my computer right now, it's set to 8 p.m. and 5 a.m., right? When it turns on, when it turns off. Apple. So on the night shift setting, you click on this area right here and it takes you to this, right? Again, sunset to sunrise or a custom schedule to turn off at a certain time and turn off at a certain time. Midnight to 6 a.m. on this case. So the color filter is a bit more complicated on the phone. You go to an app called Shortcuts and it looks like this, right? You can see already I have an automation that enables that filter to come on at 10 p.m. unusual, right? The way to do that is to click on this addition button in the corner to add an automation. And then it's like this. It will come up with this. You click on time of day, click on that, click on new blank automation, click add action, type in color filter, click on that one, and then that should be done. You click done. And then there it is, right? A new automation. So I've got my color filters to turn on at 2.31 in the middle of the day, right? For you guys for this video. What about Beyond Tech, right? Dim lights, generally a good idea, right? Get yourself a desk lamp because the light you have in your room, the main light you have in your room is way too bright for you to be able to do things normally before you go to bed. Get a dim light like this in this kind of stock photo here Warmer is better, right? So kind of bluish kind of colors are not great. Red colors or anywhere closer to that is better, right? You kind of notice a theme here. We're trying to get closer to red with our colors in our room when we go to bed, right? Blue is more a signal of midday. Think of blue skies. Think of like daytime light. Red is more like the signal for sleep. Think of sunset and sleepy times. Like when we went to bed back in the times where there's no, no technology, no lights available, we knew when bedtime was by the color of the, the lights in the sky. Red meant sleep, right? Or red meant it was closer to the time we need to sleep, right? If you have LEDs in your room, I'd recommend getting them. If you don't have them, set them to red, right? And they're quite dim already, so you don't need to dim them that much. And that will be a great effect for your eyes at nighttime. And I'll tell you what, the screen, Having it completely red, max strength, can be a bit jarring when your room is normal colors. When you have your LED set to red, the screen seems normal now, right? And that's a bit of advice I have with that. A combination of the LEDs and the screen is best because then it doesn't look so weird, right? So when I go to bed at nighttime, I switch on my LEDs and the screen, and then it doesn't look so jarring. When I look at my phone, when I look at my laptop, when I look at my whatever I'm using, it doesn't look so jarring because everything in my environment is red. So my brain kind of just adjusts to that value, right? So actual activities, <laughs> I, I, I labeled this section activities, but I haven't talked about activities yet. Books, these tend to be, okay, all of these are low energy activities, low energy activities. Reading a book, listening to an audio book, listening to the radio, listening to podcasts, talking to a friend, right? Typically activities that don't involve a lot of physical energy, not even a lot of mental energy. It's very simple to do, very easy, very kind of like 
easy going and you get to a mood where it's easier to sleep after you do the activity, right? What I would not recommend is stuff like this, right? Stuff that excites you, right? Exercise generally excites your central nervous system, right? Caffeine, obviously it keeps you awake, right? Screens, that feeds into the excitement. Like excitement in general, anything exciting in general, maybe you had like a big celebration and a party, you're not gonna sleep easily after that party. You need some time to relax a little bit before you go to sleep. You might relate to this in real life, right? Too much food. You need time to digest your food, especially certain people have a really bad time with this when they eat a lot of food and they go to sleep. So I recommend to those people who tell me this, just eat a couple hours before you sleep or eat less perhaps, right? So those are things I don't recommend because of the excitement that they give to your body. And it generally means that your body can't relax enough to get back to sleep, right? So a summary of that section. Red lights in your room, red lights everywhere, in your technology, in your room, and two hours before bed at least, right? Before you close your eyes to get to bed, two hours, turn your red light, turn your red light on, tongue twister, and do some low energy activity, right? So just have some time to relax and be with yourself, alone time, even talking to a friend, reading a book, whatever you want to do. I like reading a book. So I spend like an hour doing work in the red light environment, and then an hour also reading a book, right? It tends to be the best for me to get to sleep at night time. So that's that. Number three, physical signals. This is probably the most obvious one I'm gonna talk about here. Sleep when you are tired. Right? I know that sounds obvious, but let's have a look, right? When you're watching Netflix, you're thinking, just one more episode. God, I know I feel tired, I know I should go to sleep, but just one more episode. You're scrolling through Instagram, oh, just a little bit more. I wanna see some more memes, I wanna see some more people, I wanna see some more celebrity gossip, just a little bit more. One more game, come on, League of Legends, whatever game that people play today. What's a game that people play today? I don't even know, Solitaire, <laughs> to show you my age, Minesweeper. <laughs> and so it's obvious, right? I don't need to tell you these things, heavy eyelids, sleepiness, you know what it feels like already. You know this stuff. Just listen to your body, right? This is the thing that's like the most obvious piece of advice that no one listens to that I I promise you, it's one of the biggest changes that I've made in my life. Listening to my body and what it tells me in terms of going to sleep, waking up in the morning, in terms of like taking rest from the gym, for example, right? It's the best thing that I've done to make gains in success in my life and it puts me in this kind of like quality of performance that is elite level, right? I have this kind of mode that I, I like to call elite, elite mode, right? And this only happens when I listen to my body, right? It's such a powerful effect. It feels like you're at level 110 in terms of like how your body feels and how your mind feels, right? It's insane, right? So... Listen to those physical signals. And also, the red light will have an effect on your physical signals, right? When you expose yourself to red light before you sleep, your physical signals increase, right? Your physical signals respond to the red light thinking, oh, it's time to sleep now. Let's, you know, put the melatonin into our bodies and make our eyes feel heavy and send the signal of going to sleep throughout our bodies, right? Tip number four, all nighters. This is something that I would never, ever recommend, right? The entire next day is a write-off. It's worse than a hangover. It's worse than anything you could put into your body. It's really, really quite bad. I'd recommend at least a two-hour minimum nap in that night. If you must, if you've like, for some reason, you've left your assignment until the last minute and you just have to do this all night, right? Just sleep at least two hours. Like If it's at midnight, sleep two hours, right? Or if you submit the paper at 9 a.m. and you come back home and you just crash into your bed, at least sleep two hours until it's like 11 a.m. and at least that will be some amount of sleep in that day, okay? Sleep some, don't just stay awake for 48 hours, right? That's not good, 
it does horrible things to you. You start to hallucinate, you start to see things, you start to hear things. And it, like That's just mentally. Physically, your body struggles to deal with that. It's very bad. It's very bad. So, tip number five, the no alarm wake up. Before, before we get into that, let me just take a break and we'll get into the second half of this lecture. I'll see you then. Peace. Okay, I'm back. So, where do we leave off? The no alarm, wake up. Okay, this is good. Put very simply, this is how you do it. Sleep when you feel tired. Get up when you feel awake. Right? I know that's very simple. I know that's going to be like a load of questions arising from that simple explanation. So let me just explain a few things. Okay. The main concern with this is that what if I wake up in the, in the middle of the night? Do I just carry on with the day? Do I just go back to sleep? Which is it? Right. The one solution I've had for this, I've tried this many times and I've kind of like solidified a method to kind of do this forever, is define the boundary between night and morning. My boundary is 3 a.m. So if I wake up at 3.05, I'm going to get up and do work, right? If I get up at 2.59, <laughs> I'm going to go back to sleep, right? So any time that I see the clock, I'm thinking, okay, it's that time, then okay, I'll, I'll probably go back to sleep, right? It's not hard and fast, but there should be a boundary in your time, so you can be like, okay, I'm gonna go back to sleep, or I'm gonna wake up, right? And so with this method, you might have less hours some nights, right? Some days I have less hours, but I feel no different, right? I think it's because my body knows what I need, right? It knows what I need, so, I fall asleep at a certain time and so that might be, you know, late night, 10 p.m., 11 p.m. And I might wake up at 3 a.m., right? And if you count those hours, that's four hours, right? So I shouldn't feel that awake during the day. Like convention tells me that's not enough sleep. That's half the amount that people recommend, eight hours. I don't think that's necessarily the case. Maybe there's an average of eight hours or something, but I've definitely slept certain nights, four hours, five hours, six hours, and had a completely fine day. No symptoms or signs of fatigue at all. I've had a completely fine day. And I think it's because I listen to exactly when my body wants to go to bed and exactly when my body wants to wake up, right? And for some reason this works, right? I'll talk more about that kind of thing in a bit because there are some nuances that... There are some factors that affect whether you are able to do this or not. So I'll talk about that when it comes to that section later on. Tip number six, the morning routine, okay? So typically this is something I recommend. So let's read this quote here. I really struggle to get out of bed in the morning, right? Typically, this is a signal of a rut, okay? You've, like, several days in a row, you've woken up late, right? And so you're struggling to get out of that rut of waking up late, okay? I've been there, right? Even recently at times, right? There have been like maybe certain events happen, maybe you travel, maybe you get ill or something like that. And it just so happens to be the case that you start waking up late and you get into a rut and you're like, oh, I need to get out of this rut, right? And typically what I mean by waking up late is you wake up and then go back to sleep because you just don't feel like waking up, right? And that's not quite good, that's not good, right? What I mean with the no alarm thing is that you wake up on the first wake up, not on the second or the third or the fourth, because that that leads to oversleeping, which is what I'll talk about later on as well. So how do we get out of this rut? The solution, the one solution I found to be the best out of everything is to plan something the night before. Plan it really well, by the way. Like if you want to write something down, write down a lot of detail about what you're going to do and plan it so that it's something that you really, really enjoy doing. Something that gives you a purpose that could be like, you know, your activity that you want to do. Like if you want to go to the gym, if you want to go to make a cup of coffee, if you want to have a hot shower. So I've got some examples here. So yeah, hot shower, cup of coffee, something that you really, really enjoy, right? If you want to, if you really enjoy going to the gym, if you really enjoy working on some kind of passion project, if you really enjoy your work, make sure that's the first thing you do in the morning so that when you wake up and you open your eyes, 
right? The first thing you think, okay, I get to do X, right? X activity. And you look forward to it and you want to get out of bed for that reason, right? So plan the day with a detail and prepare everything. Prepare your running shoes, prepare your clothes, prepare your gym bag, whatever it is that you need to do in the morning. Make it more efficient and more effective, right? I've often had dreams of like, you know, maybe one day I can build a bed that would like, you know, tilt upwards and slide me out of the bed and that would be it and that would be like the ultimate wake-up alarm, right? But how do I time that? How do I wake up when I feel awake and how does my body signal transfer into the bed alarm? And so I'm like, okay, that wouldn't really work, right? I'd ultimately want to get back to sleep because my sleep has been interrupted, right? <clears throat> so the only solution I can think of here is to have something you look forward to. Maybe in having something to do with a friend to keep you accountable. So go to the gym with a friend, right? Maybe working with a friend, a passion project with a friend, a cup of coffee with a friend. Maybe not a hot shower with a friend. <laughs> All right. Because once you're out of bed, it's easy to stay out of bed. Right? Once you've gotten up and you start doing something, for me, it's like writing. Like I like writing. I like, you know, writing tweets and like writing videos, things like that. I like that. Right. So I'm excited to get out of bed to write. And by the time I've written a few paragraphs and words, I it's easy for me to stay out of bed because I'm in the flow of doing whatever thing that I'm doing. And I'm awake by that point. Right. The whole point is to like get yourself to feel awake. You don't even want to get back to bed. Right. Tip number seven, diet. And here's where I want to talk about the effect of needing less sleep. Right, it's a bit of a, a edge case thing, and I'm not even sure what the studies say about this, but in my personal experience, I've found that diets like carnivore and keto require less sleep. I've, I've absolutely seen this change in my life. I can go on about an average of six hours sleep when I'm on carnivore. And I've heard other people say as well about keto, very similar things. Six hours sleep, they're fine. For some reason, I don't know what it is. I've not seen any studies, just my personal experience and people, stories that people have told me, I've just heard about this, right? I don't know why, it just is the case, right? That's personal experience. So take that with a pinch of salt, all right? So supposedly, you can make the conclusion that eating clean leads to less sleep required. Big question mark there. I don't know if that's the case. It could be, it could be, all right? So moving on, number eight, exercise. So I'm sure you've been in this kind of scenario before where you've been on a hike, you've done some intense kind of exercise and you come back from that after a long day out and you think, ah, I'm going to sleep well tonight. That's a phrase we have in English. I'm going to sleep well tonight because you've done something strenuous, something like, you know, used up your energy for the day. And so you know that you're going to sleep well because you've used up your energy right? Doing more usually means better sleep. Right? And this is something that I can say more confidently. If you do more in the day, if you've exhausted your energy, it usually leads to a place where you get better sleep, right? So, and if you're going to do activity, as I said before, don't do exercise right before you sleep. So trying to do it at this point in the day. Try to do it like when you wake up or maybe around after breakfast, lunchtime, in the lunch afternoon kind of thing, but not too close to your bedtime in like that kind of area of the day, right? And tip number nine, too much sleep, okay? For me, too much sleep is worse than not enough sleep. I kind of get into a state where I'm having those kind of weird dizzying dreams and I, I feel lazy and it gives me a really bad start to the day. So if you have experience with this, you will definitely relate to this these weird dizzying dreams, it feels like a waste of time, it sets off a precedent of a lazy day. You have that jet lag feeling of like, oh, I just feel so strange. And you would think too much sleep isn't really an issue, but it definitely can be, right? It has those mental effects and physical effects as well. <clears throat> so those are the nine tips, done, fantastic. Now for the Q&A section. So, to submit your questions, let me tell you how to do that. There's a link below, there's a community page, 
It's free for a limited time, so grab it now. You can lock in that price and you have it free for the rest of your life. Okay, that's a promise I can make to you now. Because the reason you want to click it now is because you will it will go up to 129 a month. So go check now if it's free. Get it now, right? Instead of waiting. Get it now so you can get into that community page and gain the benefits. What's in there? So first thing in the description and the pinned comment below. So you join the group, click this button here, you get in, and there's bonus content in there as well. Stuff that I won't post anywhere on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, whatever. It's exclusive to this page. So if you've enjoyed this so far, click through to that to find out more about that. But more about that later on in the video. Let's get back to the Q&A. So first question. The no alarm thing seems unrealistic to me. I think that I need an alarm to wake up. I would just be late for school if I tried that. Okay, so the idea of the no alarm thing is to wake up naturally and it does mean that you wake up at different times in the morning. So it could be a range from 3 a.m. to maybe 9 a.m. Typically for me, it ranges between a three hour span, right? I rarely wake up. So usually it's about 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. But to, your, to be honest with you, I can split that down even further into a further half. And I would say typically it's between four, sorry, sorry, three and 4.30, right? That's the kind of range I can guarantee I would wake up in if I had to like bet on it, right? So if you do this for a long enough period of time, maybe you might have a holiday or something like that, then you can train your body and you can train, you can gain an expectation of when you will wake up, right? And if you want to be extra safe, rather earlier than later, okay? So train your body to wake up early. If you go to sleep early, that will happen, right? If I went to bed at 9 p.m., I would wake up at 3 a.m., right? That's way too early for work, but too early is not a problem. Too late is a problem. If you went to bed at, let's say, 3 a.m., then you might risk waking up at 9, 10, 11, and that's not good. So really, it's the be- going to bed time that matters, right? Go to bed at ridiculously early times if you want to guarantee this, right? So I'm talking times like 9 p.m., right? Even 12 midnight, okay? Which is 12 a.m., okay? So those times, you need to have that in check, right? Go to bed early enough so that you naturally wake up early enough and test it out. Have a backup alarm as well, right? Right? If you're really concerned about being late for school or work, have a backup alarm, right? So that it will go off typically when you are awake. But if you happen to be sleeping longer than that, it will wake you up in time, right? So I've told you I wake up between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. If I really wanted to be able to like get up in time for work and it was something I needed to do like that, I would set up a back alarm, a backup alarm for 7 a.m. So just in case I didn't wake up, 7 a.m., I know I'd wake up. So I could get to work for 9 a.m. or wherever, whenever it started, right? So that's what I would recommend, a backup alarm, right? And don't aim to wake up at this time. That's a mistake I see people make as well. When they have a backup alarm, they go back to bed because, oh, I shouldn't wake up until 7 a.m. No, wake up and then turn off your backup alarm while you're awake, Right? You should only be waking up once with this, right? With a natural alarm clock, wake up once. That's the goal. So I think that covers that. So yeah, don't be too concerned about being late for school. Have a backup alarm. That should, that should easily sort out that problem. And you can train yourself to be able to expect a wake up time at a certain time, right? That's not too difficult with that. <clears throat> Next question. It's difficult to sleep earlier in the summer because the sun sets at like 10 p.m. What would you do for that? So again, I mentioned earlier things like things about the dark part of the trilogy, right? Cold, dark and quiet, right? So curtains that block out a lot of the light. You can get blackout blinds, black out and like the actual blinds are actually like fully are like light tight, right? So the blinds that you can get for that. 
are a huge recommendation. Go and research stuff that they use in Sweden and Norway, things like that, for this time in the summer when they have 24 hours of sunlight, right? What would I do for that? So, aside from these, I would try and... It's a bit difficult to like change where you live, but live in an area where there's not too much light pollution and do your best. So, that's uh, the second bit, place. So, the room... I guess this is part of your room, room, the place that you live, and then your electronics. That's the last thing I would say. Master the light that comes through your electronics and in your house in general, to be honest with you, right? So the room outside your, your sorry, the light coming from your, the rooms outside your room, to the light leaking through, put some kind of draft excluder there so that it blocks out the light and you should be able to be fine with that. Also, you can get an eye mask, right? I've never gotten used to eye masks, right? I You get them on, on like flights and things like that. I, it always just annoys me. It annoys my nose. It annoys my like eyebrows. It just, I can never keep it on and like feel relaxed. It always, like, it, like, it just annoys me so much. It, I just can't keep it on. But if it works for you, then go for that as well, all right? Also... The red light thing is also a good factor, right? So if you want to sleep, so similar in the UK, like in the UK right now, it's summer and it does set about 10 p.m. right now, right? And so when it comes to around 8 p.m., 9 p.m., I've already got that red light on and the curtains closed, right? So it looks like it's going to be, you know, sunset soon, right? It's going to be sleepy time. So have those red lights on during that period of time as well. So... I think that covers it. <clears throat> so, do the changes to your room, curtains, light from the outside basically. Live in a place with this low light pollution. Electronics, take care of those. The lights in your house, having a sleep mask and using red lights. That's what I would do. Okay, cool. Question three. If I use that red screen mode, can I still use technology until, up until I sleep? I don't know what else to do before sleeping. You can. And I do a little bit as well. Like I do some amount of work before I sleep because I feel like I need to get some work in. And I do use that red light mode. Right? Red light mode. Um, but I wouldn't recommend doing anything too exciting. Right? So nothing too stimulating like gaming... Or scrolling like typically these aren't very psychologically happy things to do or relaxing things to do before you go to bed right like watching the, the news and things like that scrolling through Instagram gaming it's, it's not really healthy for you to do mentally speaking before you go to bed if it's just like reading some text and like typing some words for work and things like that typically not very exciting things and productive in fact then yeah go for it but if you're doing something that's like not allowing you to relax and not allowing you to get to bed, then perhaps cut that down or do it like a, a bit before you go to bed, right? So I don't know what else to do before sleeping. Like, okay, the things I recommended before, I know a lot of people don't read books, but reading books are a very good way to get to bed, right? If that doesn't work, I know a lot more people listen to podcasts do something that doesn't require a lot of like energy or excitement to your brain, right? So that's why I'm talking about gaming and scrolling and news because it tends to like put your mind in a state of like awareness that is kind of the opposite to what sleeping is, right? So that's what I would recommend. Books, podcasts, something that you can just kind of relax to and kind of just, just veg out for a little bit, right? Maybe some TV. Okay, TV, generally that's fine. Like, but if you want the red light setting on there, it can affect the quality of the TV that you're watching. Like maybe you want to enjoy the TV show. If it's a relaxing TV show, right? If it's relaxing and nothing really goes on. If it's like Game of Thrones, then perhaps not because that's very exciting, very stressing, very anxiety inducing. So perhaps not Game of Thrones, okay? Or something like that, right? So some relaxing TV, some relaxing radio show, some relaxing book to read. That typically is the better thing to do. Right? 
Well, maybe it's a relaxing game, to be honest with you. That that could be a thing. I mean, I'm not too well-versed in the gaming world, right? I'm not... Like, news is never relaxing. Scrolling isn't... Nor is that relaxing as well. Yeah, that's what I'd recommend. So you can use technology, but keep it very, like, low-key, low energy, right? Don't do too, anything too exciting. Don't do anything too upbeat it's up to you to determine this as well like if you feel like it's like affecting your sleep then you know that right and so try and cut down things accordingly like that okay i think that answers that question pretty well okay fantastic and that's the end of the questions okay good so i promise you some more details about that community page it's a community page, it's free for a lifetime if you click on it now, but it will go up. I've talked about that before. So more info, what is it actually about? It's an exclusive community page with live calls every week right now. So right now it's once a week. I'm planning to up that to two times a week, eventually three times a week, and even more. Okay, I want to get involved and get more people in there and really make it a high value thing. And that's why it will bump up in price to that price. So join now if you want to lock in that price right now. It will be free for the rest of your life. You'll get a high value network of people who like, who like, who are like-minded and think like you do as well, right? So like-minded thinkers and people who aren't the average person, right? One-to-one -one coaching and online courses as well. So the video includes all the details if you're unsure about what it's about. And of course, there is bonus content available as well. So if you liked this video, definitely go and check that out. A lot more content and a lot more detail in these bonus kind of online courses there as well cool so a recap first we talked about the holy trinity of sleep dark quiet and cold right these are good conditions to seek when you are going to bed right so do the best that you can to create the darkest environment you can a cold a relatively cold environment and a quiet environment for you to sleep in right that could come in various forms for me that is living in an area that is quite country so there's no street lights outside and so dark quiet uh, the the way that i form quiet is by reading a book an audio book and so that kind of blots out any noise that comes from the outside and it helps me to relax and sleep in a nice way and the cold part <laughs> we don't have a problem with that in the uk it's pretty cold already we don't worry about it being too hot maybe Two days a year, we worry about that. And I have some methods to deal with that. Opening a window, having a cold towel on my forehead or something like that, that tends to do the job. That tends to work fine. Number two, bedtime activities. So we talked about red light on technology. So red light on the screens to filter out the blue light and to help us sleep a little bit better on our laptops, our phones, or whatever devices that you're on. And also doing some low energy activities while you're doing that, right? And also the red LEDs as well. So I've got LEDs. I don't know if you can see this, but if I turn this on, you can see there's red LEDs in my room. And that's what I use when I go to bed as well. Three, physical signals, right? The most obvious bit of advice, go to sleep when you are tired, right? Not when you finish the last episode, not when you finish the last game, not when you finish scrolling through your phone and finding that, that meme that satisfies you forever. No, when you're tired, turn off what you're doing and go to bed. The best way that I found to do this is to preempt when you feel tired. So when you start to feel tired or when like during the time when you're going to feel tired, like I usually feel tired at, let's say, 9 p.m., right? So maybe at 830, I might start reading a book so that when I'm going to bed, I'm already doing the things that is required or that are required for me to go to bed, right? So that's that for physical signals. Number four, all-nighters, right? Never recommend get at least a couple hours of sleep. If it has to be the next morning, it has to be the next morning, that's fine. But just get some sleep. It's really bad for you to pull an all-nighter. It really damages the next day of doing things, okay? Never do that. It's worse than a hangover. It's really bad for your mental health and your physical health as well. Number five, the no-alarm wake-up, okay? The thing that people think is the most tricky, right? But it is actually as simple as going to sleep when you're tired and waking up when you feel awake, right? So going to sleep when your eyelids feel heavy and when your 
when your eyes first wake up in the morning, when your eyes first open in the morning, you think, I'm awake, right? Don't go back to sleep. I know it's tempting. I know it feels comfortable and warm and nice, but don't go back to sleep. Just get up and get on with the day and you will naturally wake up as you do the things that you like to do, right? And that being said, the morning routine matters as well. If you are in a rut where you are struggling to wake up because you're waking up late and you're going back to sleep again, then find something that you enjoy doing. Plan that the night before. Prepare everything like your shoes and your clothes and things like this and so that you're ready to do something that you're excited to do in the morning, right? And that's how you get out of that rut. Number seven, I talked about diet. I talked about how diet affects the amount of sleep you might need. That is a bit controversial. That is a bit on the edge. I've seen that in my experience and I've heard maybe a few people talk about that in, you know, in like the influencer space about how keto and carnivore perhaps might make you need less sleep. I'm not conclusive on that at all. So take that with a pinch of salt. Exercise. Exercise and doing things in the day typically mean that you're more tired and more ready for sleep when it comes to it in the night time. So doing more usually means better sleep in the night, right? So if you're struggling with that, then do some, do some more activity in the day. Go for a run, go to the gym, do some activity, do some martial arts, and then go to sleep, right? Of course, don't do this right before you sleep because that keeps you in an excited mood. Try and do it during the morning or the afternoon, during the day, not immediately before you go to bed, right? And the last one is too much sleep. Too much sleep for me in my life has definitely affected me like more or worse than not having enough sleep, right? Too much sleep is just a zone in the day that sets the wrong tone for the day to start off with, right? It doesn't really help you at all. And it gives you that really strange jet lag feeling. I can't explain it. It's somehow worse than not getting enough sleep in the first place. So with that being said, thanks for watching. And we're going to say something that we always say at the end of the videos. That is knowledge is power and the power is yours. So thanks for watching. I genuinely believe that these tips will help you in your life. So pick one of them, right? Pick one of them and say, okay, I want to do this and this and make an action plan and do something in your life because genuinely these tips have helped me so much in my life. And I'm so glad to give them to you right now because I know that they will help you in your life today. So thanks for watching. Knowledge is power and the power is yours. See you next time. Take care.